on tires was magical, and then like a flip of a switch, instant tight, both ends, and did the exact same thing. I thought it was a false read in one and two. Down into three and just plowed up the track with not lifting. Well, it got worse. Um, obviously, just kept. He was saying that it kept getting tighter and tighter. That's a pretty typical thing: getting tied off the two, and then snapping loose. Ooh. I don't know, Clint. It's weird. Yeah. It's like it quit turning and then it just came around on him. It definitely just snapped the back out there. Car looked like it got flat though, Kevin. Like right before that, it like it just. I don't know if he was catching it. Let's check with Larry Mack because Larry was looking at the steering input data uh, from Kyle's first run, and what was different about that, Larry? Yeah, Mike. I mean, he was having to turn the steering wheel a lot more than any of the competitors. But I went back and watched September's race the other night. His car did the same thing in that race right there. He was complaining about the front tires not gripping, not turning. And all of a sudden, down in turn one and two, it just broke loose and he backed it in the wall. It was almost deja vu from what happened to him in September. Well, that's what happens. You just have all that wheel in it. And off of two, that track flattens out, as Kevin told us. And eventually, all that wheel catches up with you. They start, you know, biting, and then it, it uh, it'll sure pull the rear end around in a yeah, hurry. And you've got so much wheel in the thing, it's right. like you're you're just. It makes you further behind when the back starts to snap out. You're, you don't have any chance to catch it. All right, they're checking the track, and Kyle has driven straight back to the garage. Let's go down to James.